<laughs> Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Kidney stones. They are hard deposits made up of minerals and salts that form inside your kidneys. Kidney stones have multiple causes and they can affect any part of your urinary tract. Your kidney, your ureter, that's that tube between the kidney and the bladder, and also the bladder. Now, they may not cause any damage if they're detected early and treated. But if stones get lodged in the urinary lodged, tract... is that like stuck? I think that doesn't sound good. Lodged, yeah. yeah. They can cause some serious problems and they might need to be removed surgically. What treatments are there to prevent kidney stones? And is there anything new on the horizon? Here to tell us is Mayo Clinic kidney specialist, Dr. John Liskey. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Liskey. Great. Thank you very much. Good to have you. So it seems like we all know somebody who has had kidney stones or a, at least a kidney stone. How common are they? So they're quite common. So a general number in the United States, at least, is about uh, 10% of people might have a kidney stone over their lifetime. A little more common in men than in women. Is that because we're all dehydrated, or why do these happen? Well, that's certainly a big part of it, that um, all of us uh, walk around with urine that's pretty concentrated most of the time, and so in some ways we're all at risk all of the time. So that's a big part of it. So the, the more color to your urine, the more dehydrated you are? Correct. That's an easy way to see. Is there, uh, is there any... Um, rule uh, that you should follow? I mean, should it be, is there any color you should be hoping for, trying for? Um, yeah, it's, I've never been asked that question, but <laughs> I think the closer to clear is as long as it, with kidney stones is really what you're worried about, you know, that the would closer be better. to clear. <laughs> All right. Is there um, a situation if family members have it that you're more at risk? I mean, it does it run in families? It does. So, um, especially the, the common calcium stones, it's about you know 50% of your first degree relatives might at least have the high calcium issue and be at risk. So yeah, very common. It's at least as heritable as things like diabetes and hypertension. The common kidney stones would lead me to think then <laughs> that there are uncommon kidney stones. What are those? So there's others, you know, the calcium is about 70 or 80% and it's split between calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate. But then there are other things like uric acid is the other, I would say, more common one that's 5 or 10% of stones. And then rarer things like uh, struvite, which is related to kidney infections with specific kinds of bacteria. And then there's inherited forms that are much less common. Is it important to know what kind of stone you form? Yeah, so I think that's the first part of the workup. So if you happen to pass a stone or if a surgeon needs to remove it, that uh, all those stones should be sent for analysis. And that's the first step in kind of figuring out what kind of stones you have and what might be the causes. So if you pass a stone, you got to get it. <laughs> yeah, that's and they do make strainers. So our patients okay. that are in clinic, we give them. I would imagine that there's not an opportunity a lot where that stone passes and you just, oh, I forgot, didn't notice that I passed a stone. From what I've seen in uh, episodes of comedies, TV comedies, <laughs> it's extremely painful and not funny at all. <laughs> yeah, although I, I, most of the pain is when it's passing between your kidney and the bladder. So not when you're, <laughs> not when you're peeing it out? I think that's kind of variable, and at least I haven't had to do it myself, so I can't <laughs> <laughs> give a personal story. But I think the, the, the bigger pain is usually, especially when it's in the ureter, and it can be quite excruciating. And the ureter, that little tube that goes from the kidney, and, and it's pretty small. The ureter is pretty small. Yes. Um, All right, so let's talk about prevention. Because obviously if you've had one of these and it got lodged or stuck or you had to have it surgically removed or it was extremely painful, I'm sure you have a, a great interest in not having another one. Correct. So how do you do it? How do you do, prevent Yeah, them? so certainly there's there's a list of fairly um, sort of generic recommendations we give, especially if it's this common calcium stone. So drinking water is always number one. So we put out a certain amount of things in the urine that are uh, related to you know, sort of what you're eating and your hormonal regulation. So that doesn't vary depending on your urine output. It's really the output volume depends on how much water you drink and fluid you're taking in. So that's always number one, and that's the easiest way to reduce this concentration of urine, which is an important driving factor. Other things that are helpful are um, being lower salt intake. Uh, it turns out that that's important for calcium elimination in the urine, so being very low salt is good. Uh, lower protein is helpful in calcium stones, and then uh, calcium intake itself should be actually normal. We don't want people to restrict that. 
And uh, do you give people guidelines uh, with regard to how much they should drink? I mean, do you say eight ounces every four hours or, or do you 12 glasses a day? Or <laughs> I mean, all those, you know, those are things we, we often would say. Um, we really want the urine output to be uh, two to three liters or two to three quarts a day would be the, the goal. So how much you need to drink depends a little bit also on what you do. If you're outside and you're sweating a lot, you probably need to drink a lot more. Um, and so it's, it's a little bit variable, but really the key is how much urine you're putting out. Before we find out about this new study, tell us this myth or matter of fact, drinking beer reduces the risk of developing kidney stones by 40%. Is that a myth or a fact? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the 40% part, I don't know, but okay. um, it turns out, yeah, that um, when we've done epidemiology, that actually that is associated with less kidney stone risk. Excellent. Is it because of the, the beer is mostly water? Yes, I, I would assume so. Is it a pure mountain golden you know what is what is pure pure? from the land of sky blue water yeah Yeah, okay gotcha pure rocky mountain spring Uh, water is that that tell us about this new study the push study so this is a a study that's being sponsored by uh, the national institutes of health and so we're one of the recruiting centers for that study and like we talked about we do know that drinking water is a helpful thing for preventing stones uh, there hasn't been a, an incredibly large and uh, rigorous study to prove that. And so one goal of this is to see if we can get um, certain people to increase their water intake and then their urine output. How much will that affect their kidney stone risk? We're looking really at this 80% common calcium stone formers, the, the people we're trying to recruit. Um, and uh, the other goal of it is really to strategies to help people drink more water. So we, we can tell people to drink, but there's also this issue of trying to get people to, to do it and uh, to kind of teach them how to do it. So the other goal of this is using uh, technology as part of it to try to improve water intake. So they have these um, what we call smart water bottles that link up to your cell phone and uh, monitor how much you drink through the day. And everyone's wow. given a target. and Um, gets feedback over their phone if they're not seeming to keep up with their target for the day. Interesting. How can people learn more about that study? So, um, Or any of the studies, because that's not the only one that is happening. So the easiest way is we have an easy email called, it's uh, push, P-U-S-H, at mayo.edu, and that goes straight to our study coordinator. Excellent. Push at mayo.edu. Correct. Um, So what you're really trying to figure out is, does drinking more fluid prevent kidney stones, and how much do you have to drink to prevent them? Is yes, that, does those that sound are right? Two. Yes. Um, so you've got some other studies going on, um, and the other thing I wanted to ask you, uh, we've talked about hydration. You said diet really doesn't help that much. You don't really want people to restrict calcium who have uh, calcium stones. Are there any drugs that you can use that will help prevent kidney stones? So yeah, the um, we there's I would say three big classes that we use. Um, it turns out that uh, thiazide type diuretics um, actually reduce calcium in the urine, and so we use those a lot in certain patients. Uh, potassium citrate, if we give that as a pill or a liquid, that increases citrate in the urine, which turns out to be a protection against kidney stones. And then drugs that reduce uric acid production, like allopurinol, has been used for a long time. But those uh, prescriptions uh, are dependent on what kind of stone you have, right? Correct. And also a key part of it is, especially if you've had more than one kidney stone, people really should be evaluated. And that would include a 24-hour urine collection to see what might be going on in your particular case. And uh, the treatment really should be tailored. So which of these drugs you would choose would depend on what you saw in the urine and how you would focus your diet recommendations would depend on what we saw in the urine. All right, perfect. Dr. John Liskey is a kidney specialist at the Mayo Clinic. Kidney stones fairly common, 10% of the population. There are multiple causes. They're often recurrent, but doctors are indeed working on ways to prevent them. And if you want to be part of this study that Dr. Liskey described, it's push at mayo.edu. Correct. Kidney specialist, Dr. John Liskey, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.